Hello, my name is Alexey Gromov and I'm the author and the only developer of the Sound Valley application. Uh, today I want to show you how to use Scene Composer because I have already received a lot of emails with different questions about it. So I decided to create several tutorials, video tutorials. Um, and cover there a few topics about Scene Composer, how to use it, how to create your own scenes, how to add your own sounds, and other questions. So today I'm going to tell you about Scene Composer to make uh, an overview of it. And um, so after this, you can try to edit existing scenes or try to create your own. Next tutorial will be about creating absolutely new scene with absolutely new your own sounds. And the last one will be like best practices of scene creation and yeah, something like this. So let's start. Uh, here on the screen you can see the main window of the Scene Composer. For now it's empty, a lot of buttons are disabled. This is because I did not open any existing scene and I did not create new one. So this is the initial view of the main screen of the Scene Composer. Um, here you can see constantly changeable numbers. Uh, you can just ignore them because they are shown only in debug purposes just to track or to monitor the memory which is used by the application. So you can just ignore them. Um, below you can find the main menu, the file where you can create new scene, load existing or exit. Uh, also, you can save, save as or export a scene. Uh, those buttons are very useful, so we will, tell, we will talk about them later. Then scene menu, where you can test your scene and help button. For now, uh, it simply does nothing, but I hope next version will show something when you click on it. Okay. So, let's open one existing scene, let's say Forest Day, this is the most complicated scene. Um, what we can see here? First of all, we can see the name of the scene. Next is a description, it's like you can add short description, whatever you like. Uh, <clears throat> the main thing what I want to mention is that if you want to edit existing scene, just uh, exactly after opening it, uh, try to save it under a different name. Because all your manipulations here, especially like testing the scene or maybe something else, they just can overwrite scene with an existing name. So, don't forget to save it as with a different name. For example, I have already created one with a test name, but we can use number three here. Save it. So, for, uh, so now uh, we are sure that the original scene will not be overwritten with our changes. If we, of course, if we do not want to do it in, in, in purpose. Okay, let's continue. So, the name, the description, scene normalization. Several people asked me about it, so I will explain it right now. Um, what does it mean? Uh, for example, you created a new scene. It is really fine, sounds good, but uh, you can notice, for example, that your scene sounds louder rather than other scenes in Sound Valley. It means that, for example, um, some 
night rain or I don't know night sea sounds like normally but your scene with the fire and the stream or something like this uh, sounds really loud loud then so loud that you need to adjust volume in sound valley to ma make it uh, to make the volume lower <coughs> so scene normalization means that you can reduce or you can decrease the number or, or the volume of the scene exactly from the scene so you know that it is loud so you can decrease it uh, the range here is 0 to 1 so uh, it's like a normal volume range everywhere so 0 0.9 means that you have only 90 percent of the volume or 0 0.5 means that the, the scene will be uh, played with uh, 50 percent of the volume so usually I use 0 0.9, but sometimes, yeah, it is useful to set uh, lower numbers here. It depends on the scene you created. Okay, next, uh, we can see here two tabs. Uh, first tab is a list of our three th 3D sound sources, which are included in our current scene. The second tab is a list of all existing sound samples, what we have in Sound Valley. This list is always full. The first list, we can see the content of it only when the scene uh, is loaded or we can add, remove or clone those uh, sources ourselves. So sometimes this list is empty, if the scene is empty. But this list is always full. It, for now, it contains of 214 samples. Um, each of the sample also has its own normalization volume. It, the meaning is the same as for the scene normalization, but scene normalization works for the whole scene. And um, sample normalization volume here works only for this sample. So you can see different numbers here already because, for example, this finch, it sounds, it, this sound uh, is very loud. It was abnormal loud and I reduced the volume of this sound to 70% because uh, yeah, it was very loud. And uh, you can see that all... Uh, all samples here, they have uh, normalization volume. Some of them are one and maybe less. Uh, in the next tutorial, I will explain how it is possible to add your own sample, sound sample here. And uh, with this function, you will be able to create more interesting scenes. For example, with your own sounds. Um, and send it to me, uh, but I will explain later. Okay, so uh, here you can see three buttons like save sample and test sample. Clicking test sample, it just starts the playback of the current sound. You can see, uh, you can hear. <laughs> and uh, the first one, save samples, means that when you change those numbers to some different other numbers <coughs> sorry you can save the those settings to the hard drive okay okay Okay, uh, so here we can see the list of sound sources as I said previously there are three buttons below. Add, remove and clone. I think the meaning is clear. Add just adds new sound source. Remove removes it or any selected. And clone, it clones already existing sound source with uh, all its settings and other stuff. So it is easier to create slightly different sound sources here. But please don't use this clone for 
cloning, for example, the same bird several times. For example, if you want to have several crowns inside your scene, don't use this button clone. Create just one sound source and use this clone number of clones parameter to set the number of additional sound sources for the crown. So uh, one is here and additionally created zero or you can set five for example then additionally you'll be created five crowns additionally to the one which is created originally here. So uh, also in this step you can deselect or select all sound sources, test them one by one or only one for example, stream, mint and trees or crown. So you can uh, disable or enable those sound sources and uh, they will be played or ignored while playing the scene in the sound value application also as here while testing. Uh, the disabled sound will not be deleted from the scene, it will be just ignored. So remember this. Okay, below you can see the green, green area. Uh, it's just for testing, like test scene, you can start testing and here for the sounds. Yeah. Uh, this is also a debug information. Uh, this checkbox means that, uh, as you remember, inside the Sound Valley application, uh, there is a parameter. Yep, there is a parameter. Here you can see play loud sounds on off. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, some sounds, some songs here, they can be marked as loud, here you can see, and those sounds are ignored if this checkbox is unchecked. And uh, if it is checked, then all sounds are played normally. Uh, why do we need it? Because, for example, some sounds, they could be annoying, for example, like a crown. It cries sometimes annoying and uh, you can be scared of it, I don't know. For example, you're trying to sleep but crown started crying somewhere around you and you can be scared with it. So you can just disable all such annoying or loud sounds by switching off or on this checkbox here. But just pay attention to the idea that this checkbox uh, the value of this checkbox, it is not saved anywhere inside the scene, so it's just for testing the scene. While using the sound, the main sound value application, you have different checkbox there to play or not to play loud sounds, so it is not saved inside the scene. Uh, moving further, uh, what do we have on the right side of our main screen? So. You can notice then uh, when we select any of the sound sources on the left, on the right, different uh, properties of those sound sources are displayed. So, for example, let's select the bird crown here. This is my favorite example. I don't know why, <laughs> but it sounds nice and it is very simple. Uh, and here we can see what we can see here. Sound source name, it's clear, it is displayed here, it's just for you, uh, and it is also safe inside the scene file. So after you can edit it easily and freely, so please use good names here for further support or maintenance purposes. Uh, delay between songs. I will explain this together with the times, with all times inside the scene uh, and for the uh, sound source. I will show you the time diagram in a moment. 
Ah, by the way, I forgot to mention that uh, I have recently added new web page to the website, um, even two web pages. First one is to download addition, additional scenes. Uh, the page is empty so far, but if you create your new scene, it is really nice. So please send it to me and I will publish it on this page for uh, common access. So uh, it will be really nice to get some scenes from you. Uh, and the second page is the Scene Composer Tutorial. So, Scene Composer Tutorial page is a totally new. Uh, here you can find some additional information. Video tutorials part is still empty because I am recording it right now. Uh, you can find some small information here. And uh, the most important part is additional documents. Because, for example, you don't want to watch the full video and you can just find some useful information from here. So let's use this one and you can see here the time diagram. Uh, what does it mean? As I told you previously, we have here delay between songs 100. Uh, all times in the Sound Valley application are set in seconds. You can see the note here. Uh, so if you want to set uh, one second, then you should set one. If you want to set two, then two. If you want to set 0 0.2 seconds, then it means 0 0.2. So everything is in seconds. What uh, does it mean, delay between songs? Uh, for example, let's say we have a bird which sings a song, for example, a crown. The sound for a crown is very simple, like this. So let's call it tweet, the single tweet for the, for the crown. Uh, yeah, the length of this tweet is 0 0.7 seconds, so not so long and not so short, but it is 0 0.7. Um, and you can see this tweet here. This uh, blue area is a single tweet. Yeah, I marked it here. This is a single tweet. Uh, you can compile those tweets in a song. So each song contains several tweets. Uh, those yellow numbers here, I wanted to show that those tweets, they could be different. This is just first tweet, third tweet, this is not just one. They could be different. So, I wanted to show it like that, like this. Uh, so, song contains different tweets. Between tweets, we have, like, delay between tweets uh, time or delay. Uh, so, sometimes, for example, crown, uh, crowns, they usually cry with a um, delay of one second, of one second between tweets. So, it, with this delay, it sounds really natural for the crown. For different birds or different objects, probably this value will be different. And, of course, it will be different. So, uh, this is the delay between tweets inside, inside the song. And delay, delay between songs, this is what we started with. It is here, it is 100 seconds. So, what does it mean? It means that our crown will sing each 100 seconds. It doesn't mean that it will sing exactly after 100 seconds between each song. No, it is the range. So, the crown will cry not later than 100 seconds. Let's say like this. So, delay, as you can see, the delay could be different between songs. If you set 100, so it's a maximum delay. 
it will be randomly selected in this range 0 to 100. Okay, I think it's clear. Uh, so this is the timeline of the single sound source. So it starts somewhere or somewhere and uh, then it starts singing one song, then delay, 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 second song, delay, delay, third song, not three, but this is the song with the tweet number three, and then delay, delay, and more other different songs until the user switch off the sound valley or change the scene. Uh, yeah, I think this, this is clear. So delay between songs, it's a delay between songs of the single bird. But please uh, don't understand that you can add only birds here into the same composer. No, you can add any sounds objects. For example, bicycles, cars, I don't know, people are walking on the street. So it's up to you. Just don't think about it like about birds. Uh, the bird probably is the most complicated uh, example because bicycle is easier to create or walking people, people walking around you. Uh, it's easier to simulate it. But bird, uh, birds are the most compli complicated example. So, delay between songs. We have that crown cries each 100 seconds. Maximum. Okay, update while play. Also, a lot of people were asking me about it. What does it mean? I can also show it here. Uh, sometimes. Ah, okay, let's start with this note. Update while playing. If not checked, then position is updated only between songs. If checked, then position is updated always. What does it mean? That means that. Uh, if uh, the update while playing is not checked, then the position of the sound object is updated only in this range. The, not, not in this range, but in this time. The, uh, while songs are not active, while the bird is flying somewhere or it is waiting until the next song. Uh, and if it is checked, update while playing, then uh, the position is updated always. Even while seeing a single tweet, inside this tweet the position will be updated. So, what is the reason of this stuff? For example, imagine uh, again the crown. The crown could cry even while flying. So, it means that we it, it cries and flies at the same time. So the position should be updated always, and we have it. But some birds, they are singing only while sitting somewhere, on the tree, for example. So uncheck this box, and the bird will sing sitting somewhere in the space, in the same location, I mean. And after, it will fly to a different location and then stop there, in this another location and sing again from the, from the second location, but without moving. I hope this is clear and you can achieve rather interesting results using this uh, setting. <clears throat> For example, yeah, as I said, bicycle could dream uh, also while moving and it will it sounds really nice if you try. Okay, moving further. Number of clones. I said you previously, it's just a number of additionally created objects of 3D sound source. So it means that one object is created always if it is checked here. And additionally created this number of clones. Uh, it means that for now, uh, means 1 plus 0, and if you set 5 here, it will be 1 plus 5, means totally it will be 6. But let's leave it as 0. I hope it is clear. Moving further. Okay, what do we have here? Let's start from the volume. As I said, 
this is not a normalization already. Normalization I explained previously. This is just a volume. You can adjust it for the single sound source. What does it mean? You can set the minimum range and maximum range and the speed of the change of the automatical change of the volume and the initial value. So, for example, let's say the crown uh, will cry starting uh, in range 0 to 1. As I said, uh, the highest range is 1 for the volume and the lowest is 0 for all volumes. The speed is 0 0.1 each second. It's per second. The speed is per second, like units per second. In our case, it's volume per second. And uh, the initial value is 1. So, when the crown starts sitting or when the crown object is created, the value of its volume is set to 1. And each second it will be changed to 1.0 of... Uh, yeah, it will be changed uh, by 1.0 units. Uh, between mean and max values. Uh, it will be changed randomly, but not absolutely randomly. It will, uh, uh, how to say it, the engine selects the next destination value and move constantly to this destination value using this speed. So it means that it starts, for example, from one, it selects automatically and randomly destination value 0 0.5 because it is in range between 0 and 1 and move slightly to this 0 0.5 and in 5 seconds it will be there and when it is there it will select uh, the next destination point which could be between 0 and 1 in range between 0 and 1 and then move using this speed to the next destination point. So I think it's clear. You can achieve different nice results. For example, when the stream, you can hear the stream inside, uh, when you can hear the stream uh, in the forest. So you can achieve a nice effect there. If you start, oh yeah, I have an example. Yep. For example, I, I'm changing the volume of the stream in the forest from 0 0.5 to 1 with the speed 0, 0, 0 0.05 uh, just to achieve the effect like the stream you can hear it on a different volume because of some trees, grass, maybe wind and other stuff. The volume is slightly changed always. It is not on the same level. So. This is also useful. Okay, uh, the position. Position, uh, the meaning is the same, but the range is different. It could be any you like, like minus 100 plus 100, minus 100,000 plus 100,000. But imagine this position like in meters. Okay, uh, let me explain you. Um, position, you have three positions like x here, y here and z here. I will show you next diagram. Yep. This is what I use inside the Sound Valley engine. I use right-handed uh, coordinate system. What does it mean? It means that x uh, goes to the right y goes up and z goes back i mean goes through your face and back i think it's clear you can see it and the listener is always located here in the coordinate zero 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 uh, it is not moving and all other sound objects, they are flying around him by different tracks. Uh, by different tracks. And you can see that we have X 
minimum value x maximum value z minimum value z maximum value and i did not uh, draw here we have the same for y like maximum value and minimum value so you can see and uh, the idea of the changes is exactly the same as for the volume so you have the speed here for example it's 1.5 meters per second uh, minimum value for x value is minus 100 meters maximum is plus 100 meters and initial value is zero and uh, the speed is 1.5 meters per second so the object will fly in this range minus 100 plus 100 with a speed 1.5 so we have the same values for the z position it means that the object will fly like uh, in borders of this square like minus 100 plus 100 minus 100 plus 100 it will fly around you inside these borders Uh, I have two useful buttons here. For example, usually I set X position first and then copy it to Y or Z or, or Z or both. So you can use those buttons just to save your time and not uh, typing manually numbers here. Uh, also, one note if the speed is zero, then the value of the position and also volume if the speed is zero here here or anywhere if the speed is zero the position is not changed or the volume is not changed automatically the value which is set is used as a constant so for example you can set a zero speed here and the value to 30 it means that the x position for the currently selected object will be always 30 like 30 meters so x will be always 30 if you set exactly here 0 and 30 or I don't know 50 let's say it means that our bird crown will be always in the same position like x 30 z 50 let's move everything back Yep. I hope it is clear. What do we have else? The next we have dead area radius. What does it mean? It is shown here as a red circle or ellipse, as you like. For example, we have the object track. So object is flying, flying, flying. It's a bird, for example, flying and it comes closer to this dead area radius. This dead area radius means that the object can't come closer to the listener uh, rather than this radius. Uh, so it can't fly inside. The object will just go uh, on, on the surface of this sphere. Yeah, it is sphere because we have a 3D dimension uh, coordinate system here. So it will go uh, it will go on the surface of the sphere and then uh, move uh, along its normal track again so if the objects if the object could come or yeah could come inside this sphere this forbidden sphere it will go on the surface Yeah, I hope it is clear. So objects, they simply can't reach this dead area radius. They can't be inside this radius. Why do we need this value and why I recommend to use it? Because if you set it to zero, it means that the object could reach your head. It's, uh, yeah, it's weird a little bit, but okay. That could cause some weird uh, artifacts like audio 
artifacts. Uh, the sound could be could sound weird or something like this or too loud or I don't know. Many cases you can hear different noises instead of normal sound, something like this. So please don't use zero inside the scene composer here. Try to set some normal and natural value here because you know bats usually they do not try to hit your head. They always fly somewhere around you, not closer than 10 meters, for example, or 5 meters from you. So please use some good numbers here, but not zero, but it's up to you. You can use also zero, and if it is fine, then it is fine. Okay, next one, background sound. Each sound source has its own background sound here. Why do we need it? Um, because I didn't want to separate like background so sounds and uh, sound objects which are flying around you. So you can select you can select any of the background sound from the list here. Of course, you can select like uh, our crown again, but it will be stupid because background sound is played always in the loop so uh, usually you should use it for something like blowing wind or stream or sea waves or something like this which is played like a background sound so you can set all those settings for the objects for the object set a background sound for example like wind in trees and this wind will move around you according to these settings and it will be played in loop but uh, I recommend to use separate sound sources for background sounds so please don't use a background sound together with the bird songs uh, as I did here for example for you please use different and separate objects for this like wind in trees there are no no songs no other sounds there is only one background sound which is flying in this range around you with this volume update while playing also be sure that it is checked. In other case, it will never be moved to a different location because it is played in the loop. As you understand, it's impossible to move it in such situation. So, use separate sound sources for background sounds like stream, wind and trees, waves, or whatever you like. Okay. The next one and the most complicated thing is a song. For birds, I think, or even any birds, they are most complicated example here. And um, yeah, and I think I will be able to explain this example to you. All other examples are not so complicated. So please. Uh, So let's start with this stuff. Uh, let's select crown. We have only one song for the crown. You can see three buttons here. This is for the songs. So you can add different songs for the single sound source object or let's say for the single bird here, what we have. Uh, you can also clone existing songs to make small adjustments but copy everything all lists here but here for the crown we have only one song the crown is not so complex bird i mean from the point of view of singing uh, so let's select one song for the crown this is the name of the song is it loud sound or not as i told you previously is it annoying or not delay bit uh, dbt value delay between tweets one second let me show you again 
the time diagram here, DBT, you can see it's a delay between two tweets inside the song. For the crown, it is one second and it is okay, it sounds really fine. Number of tweets. Number of tweets means that each song it contains uh, a list of tweets. Here we have just one tweet. But let's select, for example, unknown, unknown bird. Don't pay attention to the, type, to the name unknown because I really didn't know what was this bird. But okay, let's say we have more com complicated. Ah, okay. Yeah, song number three, for example, for this unknown bird, it is not loud. Okay, delay between tweets is zero seconds, so tweet it, it plays uh, really tweet after tweet, and we have a list of tweets here. Oh, thirty tweets. Okay, uh, that's nice. Thirty tweets, and what does it mean? It means that each time when song should be played. Uh, when the bird is ready to sing, for example, we select or engine select the uh, the engine select from this list zero, two, three different tweets, randomly selected tweets. So it can select either zero or one or two or three tweets from this list, and it creates a song. Also uh, here, no, no, no. Ah, okay. Here we have a song with only one tweet inside the list, but we have also zero two number of tweets. It means that this tweet it, it can be played zero times or one time or two times. The same tweet. And for the third song, we have also we have thirty tweets inside the list, but only zero one or two or three are selected each time when the song should be played. I hope it is clear. How to add tweets here? It's easy. Just select any song or create new one. It doesn't matter. Open this sample step here. Select any tweets you like. And you can see button here, add to song, which is selected. So you can add and tweets are here. So, you can easily create different songs for the bird, for any birds. Um, usually, I just create a song. I just cut a long song of a bird to a smaller tweets, which are logically, you can, you can select them. Uh, inside the long song of the real tweet of the real bird and I split this long long song into tweets as you can see here I split it one long long song which I have taken from the site of free sounds I have split it into 30 different tweets and uh, yeah it should sounds really it should sound really fine but each time when the song should be played, only 0, 1, 2 or 3 tweets are selected. You can set different numbers here, whatever you like. Also here, like minimum 5, maximum 10 tweets are taken for each song. I hope this is clear. Also, when the scene is, created, when the scene is ready and uh, or you are satisfied with the changes you've just made, just click Test Scene. And listen to it. I prefer to use my headphones because it's the quality is much better, and you can hear different, different, yeah, different nice things or weird things inside your newly created scene. Also, you can use this checkbox to deselect all sound sources inside your scene and select only one of them um, to test exactly this song, this uh, sound or this bird. You just need to remember about this value because if it is set 100 seconds it means that potentially you could wait 100 second, seconds until the first song 
is activated. <laughs> so use zero here or something like five seconds, which is more, <laughs> which is better rather than 100 seconds for testing, just for testing. And after you can set 100 seconds, because for example, uh, it could be weird and or it could be annoying to listen to a uh, crown often or more often than each 100 seconds. Because other birds, they could be potentially they their songs are more beautiful rather than crown. Okay, and the final thing which what I want to tell you about is um, yeah okay safe safe as I think it's clear the behavior is common for all applications here. I want to mention this menu, the export. Please, uh, when your sim is ready and you want to share it with other people or you want to send it to me uh, because I'm going to create um, an archive of good scenes, good additional scenes for the Sound Valley and I want to publish it on the website. So please send your things to me and use this export button. Uh, you need to select just a folder here where you want to uh, export your currently created scene. For example, Let's say D, folder number two, and OK. Just waiting for a while. Yeah, export uh, scene has been exported successfully. OK, we can go to this folder two. OK, forest day three. This is our exported scene. Inside we have a zip archive and uh, two folders inside it. Uh, you can ignore or delete those two folders. This just um, those folders are just temporary, but oh, also for you to check if it is exported uh, correctly. So what do we have here? All sounds which are used inside this. Uh, inside your scene, all settings which are set for your scene, they are saved here inside the scene file and all sounds are copied to sounds folder, so you can see, and everything is zipped into this big one zip archive, which for now is only 14 megabytes which is not so big and you can select this one zip archive and send it to me or to your friends to listen to your scene. Uh, so if you want to export or to share your scene with other people, use this zip archive. Zip archive and export function. Okay. I think this is it for today. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Next tutorial will be about adding your sound samples, your own sound samples to the list here. And see you in a few days. Bye bye. Thanks for using Sound Value application and um, for really nice feedbacks and notes, notes and for really, really, really nice ideas. Thanks. Bye bye.